This is a quick introduction to the National Coastal Change Assessment. My name is Alistair Rennie. I've been working with uh, Jim Hansom and James Fitton at Glasgow University. The Climate Change Scotland Act in 2009 places a duty on the government to address the risks identified within for Scotland for within the UK Climate Change Risk Assessment. The government's chosen to lay these out in a clear and transparent manner within the Climate Change Adaptation Programme. It expects that rising sea level, more coastal erosion and associated increase in coastal flooding to increasingly affect Scotland's soft coastlines, its assets and its communities. Maps of past erosion, current state and future erosion conditions are required along with the ecosystem service impacts to be assessed. Scottish Natural Heritage has been asked to put in place adaptive measures uh, for our natural heritage sites, but more generally, most public bodies have got obligations to consider the implications of coastal erosion for all of Scotland's assets. Dynamic Coast, or Scotland's National Coastal Change Assessment, was funded to undertake this work. It's a Scottish Government project funded by CREW, the Centre for Expertise of Water. The other badges that you see on the slide are for our steering group um, and we're grateful for their support uh, over the last couple of years. So how do we appreciate past erosion? We've used time series, a time series comparison of geo-rectified historical and modern mapping which allows the past rates of change to be established. So we start off with a, a map from 1890 here of St Andrews and we see uh, the coastline clearly clearly marked out. We digitise the line, we trace the line and see uh, where, it, uh, where it lies. And we compare that with a modern map from the 1970s and more recently with a, a modern LiDAR surface in, in this area, a highly detailed survey. Um, dating from 2011, where we can pull out the modern mean high water springs line again. These three lines are then compared to identify the areas of accretion in this area here in St Andrews, but also the areas of erosion in this area here within the Eden Estuary. In certain cases, however, the, uh, the past may not be the, the perfect key to the future. However, it's the, the least worth, worst method it's le least likely to be challenged legally. This method underpins shoreline management plans where they exist in Scotland, but we've adjusted the methodology slightly to ensure that when we project erosion forward into the future, we're not uh, projecting it within areas that have resilient rock within them, but only in the erodible areas of land. So how do we know which bits are potentially susceptible to erosion. Well, some work that was done at Glasgow University by James Fitton and, and uh, a subsequent aspect funded by CREW uh, has been used and developed to identify this. It's called the Coastal Erosion Susceptibility Model and it takes the surface altitude, rock head altitude, coastal proximity, wave exposure and sediment supply and it takes these factors together on a 50 by 50 metre grid across the entire country and identifies the areas that are inherent, inherently susceptible to erosion. So take, for example, the sand dunes at St Andrews. The rock head here is actually really quite low and below sea level. So it's actually inherently susceptible to erosion. Contrast this with the town of St Andrews, where actually the rock head is high and above mean high water springs and these other factors are also helping make St Andrews itself inherently resilient to erosion. So these data sets have been incorporated within the modelling. There's also some other complexities. Um, where exactly is the soft coast? Well we've checked all 21 thousand or so kilometres of shoreline to identify which bits are rocky and which bits are soft and potentially erodible. We have used uh, the Ordnance Survey mapping but we needed to check which bits were accurate and representative and which bits weren't. So we checked all 4,000 kilometres of the soft coast and compared it with modern air photography. 
we found that 17% of the areas checked were out of uh, were out of date, uh, and as a result, in discussions with the Ordnance Survey, they've reflowed much of it in the 2016 flying season. We're incorporating this, along with other data sets such as the LiDAR one referred to earlier, to update mean high water springs across Scotland. The result of which is we have terabytes of data which has been used to analyse and appreciate our dynamic, dynamic coast at a level of detail that's never been achieved before. There are over 50 project partners and we've attempted to appraise all of society's interests. The results will come in a various different formats. Most useful perhaps are the web maps which can be viewed on dynamiccoast.com but also a series of summary reports taking each section of the coastline, each coastal cell, detailing the areas of significant change. There'll also be bespoke results and policy reviews for key partners. So the character of Scotland's coastline, different bits of the coast are have been analysed and compared and you can identify the areas of uh, rocky shore so for example along the east coast on cells one to three you can see that 40 percent is is composed of resilient rocky shore 15 percent is artificial and 45 percent is soft these proportions vary around the coast as we would expect so what actually have we done within these soft and artificial bits. Well, we concentrate on the soft bits. We take the old shoreline and the current shoreline and we put dots along those lines every 10 metres along the soft beach, the soft coast. We then automatically calculate the distance between those dots and the newer shoreline. Appreciate the survey dates for each of the lines and then using a distance divided by time calculation identify the rate of change. Those results are then displayed with erosion being shown as a negative value or a red value and accretion being shown as a positive value or a green value. So that's the approach and that sort of runs all the way through the uh, numeric results but also through the, the mapped results as well. As you can understand, looking at all 4,000 kilometres of soft beach and measuring every 10 metres, there's a substantial amount of data that's been produced. These will come in the form of summary tables uh, as shown here, but also slightly more helpful statements as below. So for example, within the east coast of Scotland, historically 38% has advanced that's between 1890 and 1970. But more recently, 23% has advanced since the 1970s. So historically, on the East Coast, 38% has been accretional, and more recently, 23% has been accretional. Looking at the flip side of that, of erosion, historically, 15% of the East Coast had been eroding in the historical time period compared with 19% more recently. The results are also broken down into different ways, looking at here uh, the, the, the significance of the change and the proportion of each coastal length that also uh, changes in that way and to that, uh, that amount. We can display these as tables or as pie charts, which are slightly more informative. So we, if we compare the pie charts of how nationally our soft coast has changed in the early time period the historical time period between 1890 and 1970 and then more recently from the 1970s to the modern data we can see how the slices of the pie chart adjust through time now we're still compiling this data but this is the stat so far which will will change a little um, but basically what we've seen so far is there's an increasing per percentage of the coast that's becoming stable, erosion is increasing, is increasing in extent, accretion is reducing in extent, we're getting more extreme erosion, the rates of erosion is quickening, and the rates of accretion is also quickening. So as far as conclusions then, the National Coastal Change Assessment has identified the areas experiencing rapid and modest change 
but also areas of stability across Scotland's very varied shore. So 79% of our soft coast has been found to be stable more recently, since the 1970s. 8% has been accreting and 11% has been erosional. This highlights the considerable resilience of our stable and accretional uh, shores. And such knowledge is useful when considering strategic assessments and infrastructure planning. So if we think about uh, what happens um, where we don't have that contribution um, and erosion happens, uh, such as Montrose, or where we have sediment supply, plentiful sediment supply building up and maintaining, for example, the East Coast rail line in, in many different areas. So... The sustainable management of our natural capital, or in this case, our natural beaches, our natural coastal defences, is vital to protect essential services and economic growth in Scotland. So, nature can help us cope with climate change. By projecting the past changes into the future, we highlight assets at greater risk and resilience as well, which allowed more detailed assessments to be done over the bits we're more interested in. Looking forward, we, we intend to do more research on targeted areas of interest. For example, Scarabray, the World Heritage Site um, up in Orkney, where we're using three-dimensional surfaces through time to inform more detailed risk assessments, mitigation, mitigation and adaptation strategies. If you'd like more information, please have a look at dynamiccoast.com or email ncca at snh.gov.uk.